At this point, let me launch the uh, session on power as regards Nigeria's power sector. It was quite an interesting session. And uh, let's quickly hear from the panelists uh, during uh, that session, a representative from the Federal Ministry of our power, Mr. Gabriel Yehoa Sese, was uh, there. Sonny Roche, Chairman Strategic Alliance uh, Corporate, uh, Promotion Company, as well as Engineer B.M. Membere, Founder Managing Director of B Energy Consultancy Services. Uh, these gentlemen did justice to the topic around the power sector in Nigeria. So, having said that, maybe we can bring in. Um, understand there's some audio challenges by by the by the honourable minister. Uh, maybe we can bring in um, uh, Dr. Roche uh, at this stage and just talk us through his views around around uh, concessioning PPPs and, and raising the kind of financing. What type of financing? Or what kind of private investments? What kind of public sector initiatives? Um, can drive the inclusive growth and also the kind of risk mitigations and investor confidence and what, what kind of things investors should look at um, and that government need to do to bring in the right investment into the sector. Um, so, uh, Dr. Iwachi, please, you have the floor. Moderator, this indeed is a bunch of loaded uh, questions. And uh, let me attempt uh, to take them uh, one by one, as I was able to jot them down, uh, the type of financing clearly would be desirable equity, uh, first and foremost. And uh, to have equity in the power sector, you need deep, deep pockets of people who are ready to wait a long term, the long term investment. In uh, more developed financial clients, usually fund such things with either long bonds or in America, what you call a Gini Mays. That is a veteran's uh, long-term money that are placed for over 30 years. In Nigeria, the longest term money that we have, apart from uh, some of the government bonds, uh, if you look at bank deposits, one year, two years, but we also have government bonds. Governments can raise uh, bonds to go for this. Well, you can have the normal bonds and you can also have uh, green bonds that are targeted towards working towards the uh, 2050 Paris climate, uh, net zero climate. That can really uh, be a way of taking the cash flow away from the system. Then, when you talk about uh, risk allocation, uh, risk allocation uh, is based on the fact that, well, you already have takers. Uh, in the case of the discos. The discos, 11 of them have indeed uh, been privatized. So uh, let us leave that to the owners of those businesses. You have Eko, you have Ikeja, you have Enugu, you have Potago, you have Yola, you have all of them, okay? So let us leave the, the ones that are already been privatized. But now on the government policy, we already have the electricity sector uh, reform act uh, 2005 it's everything is there the letter is there but the greater part of what we are dealing with is the spirit of the letter we signed an agreement in uh, 2018 2019 with uh, siemens of germany siemens is one of the biggest and reputable companies in the world i don't know what has happened to that one in january of this year i'm aware that they signed the pre-engineering and the Siemens deal is supposed to take care of both the discos and the uh, TCN, Transmission Company of Nigeria, where I was executive director for four years. And um, that has been under the Presidential Power Initiative, which I had written a lot of articles to give kudos uh, to the current administration for going that route of getting Siemens in the PPI uh, uh, schedule, whereby the German uh, government will put down 85%, whereas the Nigerian government will put down the 15% counterpart funding. I don't know where that has reached. I think uh, the former German Chancellor Angela Merkel 
was asked. And uh, she cleverly parried away that question, which gives me the impression that uh, that hasn't happened the way it was planned. Then the funding of power comes from what we all have been talking about. It has almost become a cliche that you must have a cost-reflective tariff. If you have a cost-reflective tariff on one hand, you also now have a service level agreement in place that, okay, if we're going to pay a market tariff, therefore, you also have to make sure you give us X amount of power every day. But it now becomes a chicken and an egg situation. You cannot sell power less than the cost of generation. The numbers will not add up at all. So uh, let us look seriously at NERC, the uh, regulator of power sector, to look at the tariff regime. Because if that tariff regime stays as it is and is not reflective of the cost, power is a commodity like any commodity. If you're a businessman and you're selling cars, or you're selling tomato, the cost of production must be reflected in the price of the goods and commodity or services you are produ uh, 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 producing. Same ditto for electricity. Electricity is a product that has to make profit for the owners. Uh, the, the, the private investors who put their monies, who borrowed uh, monies from financial institutions will not sit, sit back and say they are for Christmas to anybody. It doesn't work like that. There is no Nigerian way of running the power sector. There's only the proper way. And the developed countries have achieved it. A lot of smaller countries have achieved it. There's nothing stopping Nigeria from achieving 24 7 power in Nigeria. I know we are uh, limited with time. Let's now go to uh, the unbundling. You mentioned unbundling, right? The only sector that is still yeah. under the purview of government is the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, which controls the national grid. And uh, I know for certain that the, uh, the that NET signed two licenses in 2014, uh, two licenses, one for transmission service provider and two for independent uh, ISOP, the independent uh, service provider. Uh, so uh, what has happened with that one? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe the Honorable Minister of State for Power, I saw it's supposed to be here, or wh whoever his representative uh, is on this panel should give us uh, a, a feedback on what has happened to that. Yes, sir. Um, if I could go further, just based on your experience, so recently in, on, on two levels, um, Lagos State um, had a stakeholder session and they said in Lagos, with about 20 million people, um, using Lagos as the economic and industrial um, center, epicenter of, of West Africa, essentially. Um, Lagos says they require, I think, perhaps about three gigawatts um, or, or today, but maybe in the next few years, they probably require, you know, uh, five to 10 gigawatts of, 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 of power. But TCN is only able through, I think, um, the AJA uh, 330 and the, um, the, the, the other one from uh, the Abelkota Axis. Um, it's only, only able to interconnect Lagos on these two transmission lines, uh, which have limited, limited capacity. Um, and so, the, Based on your experience um, in, in TCN, um, how is it that the, 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 there can be generation wheeled into Lagos that would, uh, because the rule of thumb is that for one million people in the, in the working population, you need about one gigawatts in, to be in a developed uh, um, um, sort of ranking. To answer your question, the major actually this hill of the power sector is improper pricing of electricity. That's the major problem. If we get the pricing right, Nigerians might think they are suffering on the short term. But on the long term, 
what we are doing today as Nigerians is we are really getting off-grid power by our generators, by our uh, inverters, by all manner of uh, off-grid uh, power equipment that we have. If you monetize all those things, also monetize the health hazard of the pollution that these generators emit. And we are also talking about climate change, 2050 net zero emission. So when you put all those things together, Nigeria is in a cul-de-sac. It is, right. it, is, it is a tough one for the country that needs serious leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership is very key to understand. I hear people say oh, they want to run for president 2023. None of them even understands the power sector. They don't know the difference between a, 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 a kerosene and gas. I'm sorry to say that. So we need serious leadership in the power sector. We need serious leadership right. in the country to understand the enormity of the challenges of the power sector. Right, sir. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Very uh, uh, thought-provoking points. And um, maybe we'll- I hope I was back. able to, to answer some of your questions because- it, 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 You did, you did. Although I obviously would have loved to, to talk about um, um, the need to also have options. If Siemens are working, you know, we have AFDB, we have uh, the Japanese in JICA and all, 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 all other options. But I don't know. No, no, um, so, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. AFDB will give you money. Uh, I, I, this year, as finance well director, as a director, we had about 350 million from AFDB. Okay. We also had 150 million from a joint developer from say that it's not okay. the money. Okay. It's, it's not the money from all these agencies. It is okay. the commitment for us to know uh, what we are supposed to do, to know the regulation of the industry, to make sure that if, as a banker, if I give you a loan, I'm not looking at your the asset you pledge. I'm looking at the mode of the payment line. that is generated from the cash flow of the business. So if we throw billions of dollars on, uh, uh, towards the power sector and we don't ensure the repayment, it doesn't make any sense. JICA, no JICA, AFDB, Afrezim, we can bring all the banks in the world if we don't look at the structural uh, uh, defects in the value chain of power will be thrown uh, money after uh, what's not working. All right, sir. I don't know if uh, Barry Sir Gabriel, the special technical assistant of the Honorable Minister, whether he's online or engineer um, um, uh, Abi Membere. Um, if 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 they're online, please please signify. Um, we would like to please tap into your your various wells of knowledge um, and share in this in this very. Um, um, very exciting um, conversation we're having. I will always want to be uh, discussing, uh, especially on the upstream sector. Um, uh, my senior brother has talked about the financing on the uh, on the power sector. Uh, domestic gas sustainability is a strong function of finance. How much fund can you inject into it? Um, in our own climb, I think uh, a lot of efforts have been put in, especially to fund the infrastructure. Uh, one of those key uh, infrastructure uh, uh, financing years back is uh, the OBOB uh, uh, pipeline that will be able to uh, uh, move gas from east, from east to west, west to east. Um, that project uh, started some, some years back when I was a GED, and it is at the advanced stage of completion. Until such a huge infrastructure is set in place, it will be difficult for us to achieve a sustainable uh, domestic gas in any country. Uh, the second key project that underpins uh, sustainability of gas is the AKK, um, because it's easier to uh, transport uh, gas through pipeline than uh, using the LNG or any compressed uh, uh, method. Uh, AKK um, was set up way back uh, 2012, 2013. It's also at uh, you know advanced stages of funding 
However, I really don't know at this stage um, what the financing situation is. Uh, the reason why I said that is uh, the initial design was to ensure that, yes, if you have a huge gas um, in the east, which is uh, in the east, I mean from uh, Bayelsa all the way to Calabar, um, compared to when you have it from the west, from Delta all the way to Benin, uh, the way the Niger Delta is structured, eastern and western Niger Delta, you'll be able to move uh, gas freely uh, from one area to, to another. Uh, so that infrastructure is key. Secondly, there's also an infrastructure, gas infrastructure project that is designed to move gas to the northern sector. Um, like what you are going to experience in, uh, in the power sector, um, we, we try to avoid it in the upstream sector. You don't generate power in uh, Alpha and then send it to the national grid uh, before you redistribute it. That's waste of energy. Uh, so with, with gas, what we want to do is uh, move the gas straight to where the power generator is. And it is a lot easier than um, um, using a compressed gas and then decompressing it before you utilize it. So until this key natural gas, natural gas uh, infrastructures are in place, it will be difficult for us to have uh, a sustainable domestic gas uh, uh, supply in country. Um, with respect to uh, clean energy, with respect uh, to cooking, yes, LPG distribution has been growing steadily. Um, I think uh, this is also why we need uh, the government policy um, towards uh, how we can continue to increase the LPG supply uh, to those areas that are still locked in with uh, firewood and kerosene. Uh, but the key here is government have to come up with a dedicated LPG plan. Um, there are times uh, we have to uh, um, have a flexibility or a compromise between uh, profitability of export versus local utilization of uh, LPG uh, because uh, the spin-off effect on our GDP will be higher compared to when we export. Now, with respect to local content on renewables, um, one of the key um, challenge here in Nigeria is there are no researches uh, and financing of research projects. If you have to do solar, virtually almost everything apart from the cable uh, is uh, imported into the country. Uh, so yes, you have the technologies or the skill set to install and manage it, but uh, to manufacture even the solar panels will require something that we do have, but uh, we've not developed uh, it to a point where we can develop our own um, panels, one way or the other. Uh, so yes, it's, uh, it's, it's an area that is growing fast, but we have to look for a way uh, to be able to uh, uh, reap the benefit, if possible, a policy uh, for us to bring in uh, knockdown parts of the panels, install them in Nigeria and use them. It will create uh, the necessary jobs that we require to move the economy. With respect to wind, and uh, yes, that, uh, that's, we have the enormous resource with respect to wind. The entire uh, Niger Delta and the offshore environment is uh, all wind. But as I said, yes, uh, one key thing is uh, data and information that we require to be able to design our own. Initially, it's going to be a bit difficult, but this is 21st century. If you can, if you can design, you can copy. Um, so government policy of encouraging wind as a source of uh, renewable energy is something that um, is, I would say it's long overdue because uh, we have our coastline or offshore lines that are so huge that we can do a lot of things. If for nothing else, copy the North Sea model. Um, right, I think sir. with respect to financing, yes, um, We've utilized the PSCs. Um, they are matured with respect to uh, 
what we use them for. We, um, we, we developed uh, the PSC type model, even in the JV with modified carry and all sorts of names. And currently uh, talking about technical and financial services type agreement, these are all uh, financing instruments to develop uh, upstream hydrocarbon uh, sectors. And all these are still in existence. Uh, more will still come as we look forward to uh, uh, the divestment of uh, the majors uh, between Shell and uh, Mobile in the nearest uh, future. No, just quickly, uh, in view of the time constraint we have, um, the moderator mentioned a number of things, service based tariff, uh, energy mix, um, you know, investment in the sector and all of that, COP26. I will just try and make a few comments. As you are aware, the present administration is pursuing um, very vigorously all policies that will lead to um, Nigerians enjoying um, adequate, you know, safe and reliable and affordable power. Now, currently, the surface-based tariff that has been introduced is to, from the angle of the ministry, uh, it is, you know, sustainable. It was targeted at uh, achieving improved service quality. And we have reports that we have received indicate that uh, this is being followed and service is improved. And um, we are hoping that with the service level agreements that have been put in place, compensations also will be paid to customers where these goals fail to meet you know, the performance targets. I, I seem to have lost um, the Honorable Minister's representative. Um, I hope it's not power failure. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say that. Well, it is lack of it, gas. It is lack of gas. Uh, it, I, 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 uh, Hello. I have no comments to, to those two uh, remarks. So then we, uh, have, we have enormous gas. Our asset, Niger Delta, is so matured. Because of the maturity, you produce more gas uh, as uh, the, uh, the wells get matured. So gas. The, the, Production is uh, gas supply is not an issue at all. So, so why are you flooding well, gas? If, if you have so much gas, the why question I wanted gas? to ask is: so yeah. nobody goes to okay? Uh, Minister is back. Sorry, yes. Sorry. Yes. Now, quickly on uh, removal of subsidy. Uh, this is ongoing, and if we recall, the Vice President Professor Yemi Osip Banjo uh, recently at the uh, opening ceremony of the. Nigerian Association of uh, Energy Economics, I think that was as recent as uh, July, he gave the indication that the subsidy will be fully removed by next year, that's 2022. And so we can confidently say that um, this process is on course and the government is determined to put everything in place to uh, ensure that, you know, subsidy in the power sector is fully removed by 2022. Yes, sir. Now, on uh, COP26, you are aware that uh, as a party to the Paris Agreement, clearly, Nigeria also subscribes to the global efforts to 
remove emissions. And um, the current plan is to ensure that by next, you know, by 2030, as much as 27% of emissions is achieved, reduction in emissions is achieved. And this has implication for the power sector because as we work towards, uh, you know, renewable energy and more efficient, um, you know, uh, ways of uh, utilizing energy, emissions produced by uh, fossil fuels and uh, generators will be removed and that will improve uh, the environment substantially. And um, on the issue of, uh, on the issue of decentralization, you know that the government is uh, working hard to ensure that policies that are targeted at off-grid and mini-grid are pursued vigorously and RIA is doing you know well in this area. You are aware of the uh, energizing education programs which um, targets at uh, providing off-grid power 